This is Math 99, and we're going to take a peek at Section 8.1. And I do want to point out uh, the homework for this, Section 8.1. It's in, a, in the elementary algebra textbook. It's not in the algebra and trig textbook. So make sure when you're checking the homework that you're looking at the elementary algebra homework. There's two different links in our, in our topics for this. I'm sorry, in our resources. 8.1. Okay, so we're just going to practice reducing fractions. Um, and we're going to start to abstract it to polynomials. So if I think about 14 uh, divided by 21 or 14 over 21, you know, lots of people will look at this and say, oh, there's a 7 in both of them. So it, I could divide both the top and the bottom by 7. And that's not a bad way to think about it. I divide by 7, divide by 7, realizing that we're really just dividing by 1, right? 7 over 7 is 1. So dividing by 1 doesn't change the value of it. It just changes the form but not the content. Uh, 17 divided by seven, uh, sorry, 14 divided by seven is two. 21 divided by seven is three. So this reduces to two thirds. I challenge you to think a little bit different about this. Uh, I'm gonna factor these things. In other words, I'm gonna think of 14 as two times seven. And I think of 21 as three times seven. And notice what I have is a bunch of multiplications. I have like two thirds times seven over seven. 7 over 7 is 1. 7 divided by 7 is 1, so what I'm left with is 2 thirds. Now, I know that may seem like, I don't know, different or strange, or like, why would you do it that way? It's actually leading somewhere for us uh, that, that we're going to use quite a bit. So let's use this on this next, uh, on this next piece. Negative 45, what's that? That's what, 9, negative 9 times 5. And 81 is 9 times 9. And I could go further than this if I wanted. I could break this 9 up into 3 times 3. I could break all these 9s up more. But actually, for what I need, uh, it's sufficient. Because notice 9 divided by 9 is 1. So I'm left with negative 5 ninths. Now, I want you to notice that I'm doing this division, 9 divided by 9, only when this top is broke, broken completely into multiplication. In other words, and I might do this uh, in a different color just to show that it's not good. Like if I had three plus two over five plus two, that should be a plus sign up top. This is something not to do. Do not do this. Boom. Here's the, here's the problem. Um, addition and division are like different levels of computation. Um, Division is like really complicated compared to addition. Multiplication and division are on the same level. They, they undo each other. So that's what we can do it this way. Notice this is not like three plus two is five. Five plus two is seven. This is actually five sevenths. It's not three fifths. So if there if things are broken by up by addition, I can't I can't I hesitate even to show you that because it's a monstrosity. Um, just because it's it's a mistake I see happen a lot at all levels that I teach. And I understand why people do it. Um, but we need to make sure that we're all multiplication before we start dividing. And so what I notice here is um, 3 times x times y. These are all multiplied together. And 18 times x squared times y squared. These are all multiplied together. This is all multiplication in the top, all multiplication in the bottom. So I can start doing my uh, reducing here. So 3 and 18. Uh, 3 and 18. 18 is like 6 times 3, right? So I can divide out the 3. So this is going to leave me a 6 in the denominator. And x squared is x times x. So x divided by x, that leaves me an x in the denominator. Similarly, y squared is y times y. One of these y's divides out that y. That leaves me a y out there. But what happens with this numerator? Well, remember, I'm dividing. 3 divided by 3 is 1. There's a 1 up here holding that spot. Notice the weight was in the denominator, was in the bottom. That's where the weight stays after I cancel some stuff out. And then the last one, 19 and 35. Uh, let's see, 35 is what, 7 times 5. 19 is 1 times 19. I'm not going to be able to cancel anything out there. X and Y, those are opposite things. So this is already reduced. It's already in its simplest form. All right, so let's think a little bit more about these sorts of things. 3x minus 6 over 2x minus 4. 
So notice I have some subtraction going on here. So I can't just start trying to cancel stuff out. I'm going to try and rewrite things. I'm going to factor them, see what I can take out. And what I notice here is a 3 goes into both 3x and 6. So I'm going to factor 3 out, leaving me an x minus 2. And in the denominator, there's a 2 that goes into both of these. So I can factor 2 out, leaving me an x minus 2. So now I have 3 times x minus 2. And I have 2 times x minus 2. So now I can do this division. x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 is 1, leaving me 3 halves. Notice what this tells me is whatever x value I plug into here, like let's say I plugged in a 10. And if I did this arithmetic, it would simplify to 3 halves. These are equivalent to each other. There is one exception where if I tried to pick it, pick an x value of 2, say, and that made this a 0 and I'm dividing by 0, so there's a little hole there. But for every other, every other x value, they're equivalent. Uh, let's use that same sort of thinking here. So I have x squared minus x minus 2 over x squared minus 3x plus 2. Bunch of addition and subtraction going on here. I cannot start as much as I want to just crossing things off. I need to get things written as multiplications. So I'm going to factor both of these. And I, I know how to factor things. I want things that multiply to negative 2, how to factor these quadratics, and add to negative 1. Um, so negative 2 and 1 would work. So this would factor to x minus 2 times x plus 1. Notice I have two things multiplied together in the top, this x minus 2 and this x plus 1. All right, in this bottom here, I, I want things that multiply to negative 2, I'm sorry, to positive 2, but add to negative 3. Uh, how about negative 1 and negative 2? Yep. So I'm going to have an x minus 1 and an x minus 2. Again, now it's broken up into two things that are multiplied together. An x minus 1 is multiplied by an x minus 2. Now I can start to do my division. x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 is 1. Notice that leaves me an x plus 1 over x minus 1. That's as far as I can go, right? Because notice, like, this is addition, this is subtraction, this x plus 1 is a thing. I didn't write the parentheses, but you can, in your mind, think that there are parentheses around that. I would need another whole x minus 1 to, uh, to divide anything out from that. So here's my answer. Notice I lost a little information that when x is 2, it makes me divide by 0. So this and this are almost exactly the same. They're not when x is equal to 2. But they're, we're still using that equal sign, a little bit loose. Let's do a couple more here. So same idea. I've got a bunch of addition. So I'm going to factor everything. So 42, things that multiply to 42, negative 42. And add to 1. Uh, 42. Hmm. How about 6 and 7? Seven? 7 and negative 6. So this numerator is going to factor to x plus 7, x minus 6. And then notice down here, oh, sorry, those aren't x's, those are y's. Bad habit. See, I did that. It will be okay if you occasionally do that too. I have a difference of squares here. My middle term is a 0y. So I could think about things that multiply to negative 36 add to 0, or 6 and negative 6. So I've got y minus 6, y plus 6. Now this is broken up into multiplication. Those divide out. It leaves me y plus 7 over y plus 6. There's my answer to that one. This next one here. Uh, there's a difference of squares in the bottom. In the denominator, so x plus 5 times x minus 5. 7 and 1 multiply to 7 add to 8. Nothing cancels? That just means my fraction is already in simplest form, just like that like 19 over 35 that I had before. It's already reduced. You can, you can leave your answer like this, or you could rewrite it in this factored form. Either way is fine. All right, another one. Man, we're just cranking through these. Uh, let's do that denominator first. Multiplies to 10, adds to negative 7. I think negative 2 and negative 5. Yep. Okay, notice I have three terms up here in the numerator. 
I can factor this one by grouping. So as I look at these first two terms, I notice there's a p squared in both of them. So I'm going to factor out a p squared, and that's going to leave me p minus 2. Okay, pretty good. Plus, uh, these have a 2 in common, so I'm going to factor a 2 out of them, leaving me a p minus 2. Excellent. Now what I can do is, since these both have a p minus 2 in them, I can factor the p minus 2 out. So that leaves me p minus 2. And notice if I take the p minus 2 out here, that leaves me a p squared. And if I take the p minus 2 out here, that leaves me a plus 2. Now this is factored. So now I have this fraction in terms of a bunch of multiplications. So I can do that division, p minus 2 cancels out, divides out to a 1. There's my answer. All right, one more over here to take a peek at. Boy, uh, so going to factor these, um, these both have a 4x in them. I could take a 4x out. Um, 8x squared minus 16x minus 64. I notice all these are divisible by 4, 8, 16, and negative 64. So I think I'm going to divide out a 4 first. Actually, I could divide out an 8. How about I take out an 8? That feels even better. x squared minus 2x uh, minus 8. So I know there's going to be an 8 here. And then things that multiply to negative 8 add to negative 2. Right? I can factor again, like I can factor this now. I think negative 4 and 2. So notice I have in the numerator, I have three things multiplied together, 4 times x times x minus 4. In the denominator, I have three things multiplied together, 8 times x minus 4 times x plus 2. So I can start my dividing. x minus 4 divided by x minus 4 is 1. And then this 4 and this 8, this 8 is a 4 times 2. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. And I'm just going to kind of survey the wreckage, see what's left. In the numerator, I have an x. In the denominator, I have a 2, and I also have an x plus 2. And that's it. I am done. Fully factored. I'm sorry. Uh, fully reduced. A couple more to think about here. This denominator is a difference of squares. So m plus 2 times m minus 2. m cubed plus 8. That is a sum of two cubes. That might take you back to math 98. Um, this is just something to know. If I have like a cubed plus b cubed, that can factor to um, the first thing, same sign, second thing. So a plus b times the first thing squared, opposite operator, the first times the second plus the second thing squared. And that's always that's always true, right? Like if this is a minus, this becomes a minus, that becomes a plus. So notice what I have here is m cubed. So m cubed, that's like my a. And 8 is 2 cubed. So my b would be like a 2. So I could rewrite this as uh, the first thing plus the second thing. And by the things, I mean the things that are cubed. Times uh, the first thing squared, opposite operator. Uh, the first thing times the second thing. Second thing, same thing. Uh, plus the second thing squared, 2 squared is this is how you factor cubes. That divides out, and there's my answer. And on these last two, we basically have a couple of uh, things to recognize. Um, I have x minus 3 on this first one over negative 3 plus x. Let's see, x minus 3 is my numerator. Notice my denominator, negative 3 plus x, is the same as x plus negative 3. So this is just positive 1. Right, like x minus 3 and negative 3 plus x are the same. Now, I could start to apply the same sort of thinking for this one. Like the top is 5y minus 7a. And if I change, like this is still a negative 5y. This is actually a negative 5y plus a 7a. Now, there, these problems are a little bit different in the sense that like x didn't change. It's positive x, positive x. Its location just changed, negative 3, negative 3. But on these ones... They, they are different. 5, this is a positive 5. This is a negative 5y. This is a negative 7a. This is a positive 7a. 
So whereas this one is one, hopefully you can see that this one's gonna be negative one. Another way to think about that is, uh, let's just leave that five y minus seven a up top. And in the bottom, factor out a negative. So if I factor out a negative, it changes the sign of them both. 5y, take a negative out of positive 7a, it makes it a negative 7a. And now I have, that divides out to a one, leaving me one over negative one, which is negative one. So let me take this in the form uh, a plus b, over b minus a is gonna equal negative one. Just a good thing to recognize. Take a look at the, uh, the, the assignments, get some practice in. Remember, we are using the elementary algebra course for this section, um, so um, there's a link to it in the homework and in the resources. Make sure you do that. Post any questions you have or message me.